when it's dark, it's always the best part of the light on. It's October the 6th, and I'm running the trap at Lionwood the tea cream for a couple of hours. See what turns up and what we get. So while I put the big bright light on, you can have a look at these titles. Isn't it wonderful? Well, it works, which is always handy when you're moth trapping. I do seem to remember a time when we got all the way out here. And we'll switch the generator on. Bing! All gone. So that was the end of that. So I'll finish getting unpacked while the light warms up. So I'm just inside the entrance at Lionwood, where you initially drive in, into it, or can drive into it. And there's a little sort of turning area that's it's always been here. I was too late to drive right into the centre, but it's not a big wood anyway, Lionwood. So, uh, and it's incredibly mild. Driving here, temperature on the car was saying 17.5 centigrade. But there's just that little bit of a breeze just through the trees there on the edge of the wood. And nothing in here. So, uh, we should get a few moths, but I think if we get 20 species, we'll have done really well. So, while we wait for something to come in, I'll make myself a cup of tea. Well, just a few minutes gone. We've already got chestnut in, uh, dark chestnut, and barred sallow. In so long, but it is very, very warm. It's ridiculous. So, if anything's flying. I was able to fly, it will be flying tonight. And there's not a breath of wind as you can see probably from foliage. I'll see what that was that's just flowing in.
two chestnuts and two dark chestnuts in. And something else has just whizzed in, so that so might be a bit busy. First of the colour for months before it goes, this is a barred sallow. So many of the noctuid moths, which is this type of moths, that basically hold the wings in a V-shape over the back. And so many of them are colourful in autumn. Autumn's great. Well, there's fewer moths. Many are far more colourful than those of summer. And we should be getting one or two of these tonight. There's a range of sallows, several sort of species with sallow in the name that are colourful and predominantly yellow. Having a white sheet on the ground and the light mounted on a box has always been our preferred method of uh, trapping moths and uh, it's the easiest to be honest the light was mounted on a box it had slots on top so that moths could go in into the box but couldn't get out and uh, that's all well and good but it can add another half an hour on at the end seeing what moths are inside We've always preferred to count the moths as they come in, and you could tell moths that are just coming into light, or moths that have been at the light and are making a bid to to escape its glare, sort of thing. And we have used, where the circumstances allow, we have draped the sheet over a fence, a couple of parts of Sherwood Forest where we used to do that, and that was really successful. Either way, you've got to be down on your knees most of the time. It takes it to its toll on your knees after a while. But even if I mounted the light on a table, you would still be, you would have moths all over on the floor. You get moths on the floor now, but they're a lot easier to see by this method. But and it's a method that's worked. And until I can't get up off the floor anymore. This is how it'll be. And I can see there's a couple of moths that's just come in. So I'm just going to see what they are. That's the thermometer on the side of the light. And it's currently showing 16 centigrade. You wouldn't think it were October. Decent number of species as well so far we've had in dark chestnut barred sallow chestnut november moth light emerald merville de jour lunar underwing snout spruce carpet common marble carpet and on the micro front the cleris rombana ipsilofa ustella blasterbasis adustella agonopteryx arenella and agonopteryx heracleana light brown apple moth and Epinosia Romella. So a decent number of species so far. Most we've had is five dark chestnuts. Oh, and six Epinosia Romella. So it's nice to see that there is quite a few micros knocking around. And we'll see what else comes in. Here's a, a dog moth. I always imagine these to be quite depressed. This is a November moth and I say depressed because they are very drab. It's almost as if they didn't want to be colourful because they felt so miserable having to fly towards the end of the year. But many when they're fresh, can be intricately marked. As is this one, although the most of the wings is plain, and it has that darker and scalloped edging. And this will be the commonest moth that many people 
trapped in this time of year in woodland will be recording. Shame it's not more colourful. I'm sure it'll get over it. Still very warm for October anyway. Still 16 centigrade. There's one or two more November moths. You might just be able to see them flitting around on the sheet. And we're on to 19 species, so that's not too bad. Bearing in mind that most noctuids will still be feeding, probably somewhere. And in this early part of the night, moths are also pairing off. Some will remain together for hours, some half an hour, and some no doubt for 24 hours. So we should get more species in. Obviously depending on your site you might get more species, but if you was in a garden you'd be probably lucky to get 10 species to be honest. If you, Certainly if you was in a, a city garden or a town garden. Uh, if I was trapping at home, I may well run this light when I do get home because it'll still be early. One good thing about trapping in the autumn, you're starting earlier. You can have three or four hours and still be in bed by 11 o'clock. Uh, so I may well sit out on the order of the pint when I get back. Or do. At the moment, I'm perfectly happy here. Now here's a nice one. I'd forgotten about these. This is a really nicely marked feathered thorn. Fresh out. Another moth that flies typically in sort of October. But it's a cracking thing. And a decent sized moth as well. And a bit unusual in the thorns, in the way it rests, it doesn't rest in the typical sort of thorn fashion. But a lovely moth, and that's the 20th species of the evening so far. And now for a new feature, the view from the boot. Only kidding. Although this is the view from the car boot. Car boots make a great seat, especially if you've got a car that's got a decent bumper. And this is the view into the wood. The track directly behind the light runs round to the left and into the centre of Lamb Wood. You can only access the centre, although well, you can come back on a circular run, but I wouldn't recommend it in the car. And anyway, this woodland's private. But uh, sometimes, depending on conditions, if it's windy, it's best going into the centre of Lamb Wood, but you have to reverse from here. Don't try and turn round. I tried it once, ladies and gentlemen, and got stuck. Thankfully, I knew Roy in the village, and I had to walk down into the village, and he'd got a Land Rover. So he came and pulled me out. We've got a few moths flying around. But yeah, in the centre, when you get right in the centre, where the the tractor's not been, if it gets really wet, there's a part where you can sink a little bit, but it is, there is a proper, a track, well-worn track 
into the wood and, and round. It's perfect, they say. It was my fault. But I did get stuck. But anyway, thanks to Roy. All was well. See, when you sat in front of your television on a night time, you don't get little adventures like this. When you realise that your car's stuck and you're in the middle of a wood and you think, oh, the bloody hell am I going to get out of here? It was a tiny old walk into the village from here as well. Hey, it was a great day, you know. A lot of you, a lot's never lived. Well, you probably don't want to live through something like that. Oh, how I laughed, eventually. You have to admit, this is a stonking moth. This is quite a small specimen, actually, to be honest. But it's a beautiful moth with a beautiful name. And the name, Merville de Jeu, or Mervier de Jeu, if you want to put a French slant onto it. Surprisingly, it's derived and has its origins in France. There's a surprise for you. And Merville de Jour, or Mervier de Jour, literally means Marvel of the Day. Which is rather strange, really, I suppose, when it flies at night. But no doubt, when it was first given its French name, it was found during the daytime. It probably has the best name, or one of the best names of all our moths, Merville du Jour. Although True Love is not to take some beating personally, I do love True Love is not. It's a beautiful moth with a beautiful name. And although True Love is not is a beautiful moth, I don't think it quite matches this chap on my finger. What a beautiful thing, oh yeah, we're being attacked by a November moth. So that's the Merville du Jour, who's now thinking about making a move. Now I have to do really, being laid on the floor. I didn't expect one of them. A small moth with a long name. Pseudogeratosa con Wagner. As you were about to say, really. Didn't know they had second broods. Best put it in the book. You have to love moths. They're by far just brown, hairy things. That's blokes mostly.
Well, that's three hours. And I think what we'll do, I think I'll pack up now. And depending on how many moths I see on the way home, then uh, I may well run the trap for a couple of hours when I get back home. So let's start packing up. A slightly different order than normal. And this white sheet isn't so white. And that, I think, will do it. Another decent night.